strength training fanatics. If you are not focusing at least some of the time on developing power, the ability to use your strength with speed, you are not getting the best results. In fact, you're also increasing your risk of injury. One more thing, when developing power, fatigue is the enemy. In order to train for power, you have to avoid fatigue, but everybody, should include some of that training in their workouts. I don't like when you do fitness tips that make me feel guilty. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm serious. Like of all the things that we we talk about that I like It's a blind spot here. Huh? It is. It's an area that I know that um I, I have to con continually revisit and and which is so funny because it was such a big part of my training uh growing up and even into my early twenties. Like I always trained uh, like a bit like an athlete or did some explosive stuff like that and, and changed multiple, did multiple directional type of movements explosively. Mm. And I just, I always incorporated that. And then at what, you know, when it was, was when I, when I got on a kick of like bodybuilding and getting super strong, when that became so hyper-focused, yeah. that kind of stuff went to the wayside. And now I have to really be intentional about incorporating into my training or else it just doesn't find its way uh, in there. And I think a lot of that has to do with, again, not playing basketball anymore mm -hmm. and really needing that skill at the same level as I needed it before. But that's not the answer is to throw it out completely. And I know that that's a, a challenge for me. It's easy to overlook. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of those things that, um, especially for adults, like you get into all these responsibilities and work life and home life. And yeah, as kids, we could just go out and play. There's a lot more play which uh, expresses a lot of these types of movements where you're moving quickly, you're stopping quickly, you're changing directions quickly. Um, but if you look at your patterns on a daily basis, um, you can just walk to work. You can just sit down. You can. That's exactly it. I mean, you can just go to the gym and everything's sort of like formed into like even the machines and everything. You're sitting down. You're kind of controlled uh, with your with your output as opposed to uh, really having to take into account if I move fast, can I can I stabilize that? And can I slow myself down appropriately so I don't injure myself? Well, the truth that you hit the nail on the head, you don't realize how much of the skill of power you've lost because everyday life doesn't require power unless, unless you drop something well, or you got to run real quick or you got to grab your kid because they're running into the street and then you hurt yourself. Yep. It's, and, it's a trip to how you subconsciously prune these things, not even realizing. For example, like I shared that story like years ago of when I jumped out of the truck and I felt like my knees were going to explode. All right. And that was like one of the first times that like that was like a big aha moment for me. But now over time, and I don't even think about it anymore, something that for, I don't know, 26 years of my life would be the way I got out of the back of a truck. I never stepped out of the back of a yeah. truck. My For 28 years of my life, <laughs> if I got out of the back of a pickup truck, I yeah. jumped out of the back of a pickup truck. Just, it, that was natural. Because of that moment and because of how much it, it shocked me. Now, subconsciously, I, and I've caught myself, I was just climbing out of the back of my truck the other day, and I was like, I'm, I'm like stepping down. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I would not do, I wouldn't have done that just, you know, 10 years ago. Well, it is a skill and you'll lose it. Your body will get rid of that skill of strength with speed. So you can lift weights, you can be strong uh, with your, your controlled movements and you'll be better off than if you had not done that. But if you don't do anything that exerts power or trains the skill of power, you'll lose it to such a degree that you'll go to jump off something that's not that high or like I said, twist real quick because you got to grab your kid or something and injure yourself, hurt yourself as a result. Now, from a physique development standpoint, being able to master the skill or just work on the skill of power, it recruits incredible amounts of muscle fibers. This is an incredible way to amplify your muscle building ability with your traditional strength training exercises and or strength. Powerlifters understand this, by the way. The most successful powerlifting clubs include a dynamic effort or whatever type day where they're moving a light weight with speed. Mm -hmm. And what they found is this contributes greatly to their low level, you know, low grinding, you know, kind of low gear type strength. They incorporate this in their training. Now, the problem I think is, uh, is that people go, okay, well, how do I train for that? I don't know how to do a hang clean or a power clean or whatever. You, you can scale it back. You can regress power training like anything else. Like it could be as simple as jumping in place as high as you can, 
right? That mm-hmm. could be one way of doing it where you're just trying to explode out of a, a out of a squat or jumping or a elevated push up where you push yourself up off a bench or where you use a band for a row and instead of pulling slow with control you pull a little bit more explosively like you can regress back and train this skill but the thing the point that I also want to make with this is you don't train for power and look for a burn or look for a pump in the muscle. Right. There is no fatigue involved with developing power. Developing power is learning how to explode. Yeah. In other words, Immediately if you- Immediately respond. It, right. So in other words, if you're doing a jump, you jump as hard as you can after you warm up and everything, right? You jump as high as you can, and then you wait until you feel like you can exert max power again, however long that takes, and then you do again. When people do this at the gym, they do not train for power. They're just- yeah you know, box jumping until they, you know, they can't move anymore, in which case you're not developing power at all. You're just working on stamina. So we, we, we launched or launching, I should say, we're launching the maps performance advanced. When you were shooting that, Justin, uh, what are some of your favorite movements that we've incorporated into that program? That's unique, unique to it. We haven't done a lot of, uh, sprinting. We haven't done a lot of drills. We haven't done a lot of like, you know, maybe more athletic focused skill, training uh because it requires a lot more attention and so with this program the cool part is like so we we've been able to develop um with our first uh, mass performance program like what are the attributes of an athlete that they're seeking out and so it was very much more strength focused um you know building that sort of foundational basis but then what's what, if we take that sort of model and we have that foundation, like now how do we like improve uh, very specific skills that will translate really well to a lot of different sports? Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, we tried to kind of look into uh, what, are, what are some of those characteristics that are probably the most desired? Uh, and one of them speed, which we're kind of um, talking about here in the beginning, which is we, we haven't really focused on speed. Uh, and be able to move quickly, but also uh, how do we how do we deliberately program that so you you can maximize uh, the effect of that? Uh, and and we sort of flipped the model on its head a bit. So with this, it's like you have your foundational workouts, um, but they're less frequent. And now our skills are very much more frequent. So it's 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 the amount of frequency of um, being able to train those patterns so you get super effective uh, with being explosive, being able to control your body under acceleration. Uh, So a lot of speed training is in there. Uh, And and two, which was, you know, this was like a Hail Mary I threw up there uh, to ask. We had uh, Brian Kula on the show who's like just, I mean, we were all really impressed with uh, his his background and his philosophy. And he really highlights a lot of what you're talking about in terms of like eliminating fatigue uh, within training. And, and he's, his great examples, uh, Christian McCaffrey with that uh, and just how disciplined he is with his training. Every single rep he takes is very deliberate, very intentional. And then he stops before fatigue comes in and, and sort of convolutes uh, that 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 process with the body of learning how to how to move uh, at that really um, explosive pace. Yep. So you know what I want to add to this, by the way, is that if you know if you want to feel really good in your body, then train this appropriately. Being strong feels good. Being fit feels good. But if you want to take it to another level, having <clears throat> some speed, agility, and power, you feel so able bodied, like you Super move capable. And, capable like you just you know you feel like a panther like i i could i could hop up on this thing i can move in this direction i could go take run with my kids and it just i feel capable in my body it's It's, liberating it's the best feeling that i've ever had when i when i trained more like an athlete back in my jujitsu days i remember feeling so secure in my body now i feel more like a big lumbering kind of whatever but in in those days i just felt i just felt good you know everything Mm -hmm. just feels really good because my body can move slow and fast. It could be stable uh, and agile. And this is a skill. If you don't train this, if your strength training is just traditional strength training all the time, and you don't include any phases of this kind of training, little by little, this skill will, 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 you'll lose the skill to the point of where your body will maintain the absolute bare minimum that, that you require. Yeah. So you'll literally not be able to run or take off like when you need to run or jump off a curb and not feel like you might twist your ankle type of deal. Like 
That'll happen, and uh, I've experienced that. I know that so, like. were the would you say then like the the outdoor field training, footwork, speed drills were your favorite, or like the uh, landmine, landmine stuff? Landmine, uh, so Landmine University, and they've taken a lot of concepts from David Weck in, in terms of coiling. Uh, I was following them for a while. I, I remember somebody kind of tipped me off on what they were doing, and I just thought it was brilliant because um, there's. There's certain things with like power cleans that like I I, I love power cleans and I like um, to be able to focus on that for like triple extension and for a lot of like you know explosive controlled um, power output for for an exercise but uh, there is a bit of a learning curve to that there's a bit of a risk to that uh, with the barbells and, and landmine um, landmine training uh, allows you to sort of uh, place I guess. I'm trying to th the fulcrum of it. So in terms of like, you know, allowing less uh, impact on the joints um, by kind of extending that lever out away. And so you're kind of, instead of like vertical uh, gravitational forces, we're kind of allowing that to move out a bit and, and, and take some of the, some of take that. Some of the risk out a little takes, bit. Takes a lot of the well, risk Well, the skill out. of learning. You, can, a you, <clears throat> you also can do like to your David Weck point, which I love a lot of his work uh, with that is the coiling. Like you can do more yeah. coiling type of, of movements and exercises with the landmine that you wouldn't do traditionally with like a barbell. Yeah. And so we, so what we tried to do was um, highlight that, that, in general, and, and this is another skill you're trying to develop with rotation, um, to be able to coil and to be able to tense up and to kind of um, create torque before movement so you're more explosive. So, I mean, this is why we talked earlier about like um, Tiger Woods and like why he's so dominant with like his swing and how he can do it on his knees and even like out drive people yeah. just because he's figured that out. Like that's a skill. That's a de definitive skill uh, an athlete could benefit from to be able to, you know, really, you know, explosively <clears throat> recruit and, and uh, apply more more power output with every movement. Yeah. Uh, so we did that in, you know, even with like some of the priming movements uh, have matched with those specific uh, skills that we're trying to focus on. Uh, but yeah, so we, it's really unique. <laughs> Let's put it that way. A lot, a lot of really unique concepts in this program um, that um, we're able to kind of peer and zoom in a bit more uh, that will apply directly towards a sport um, that um, also like your everyday average person, like you're, you're just not considering these things because again, you're just getting up out of your car, you're going to work, you're kind yeah. of doing your thing. This, this really exposes a lot of other potential. It's so, uh, so bittersweet for me when we do programs like this, or we even talk about this stuff because I, I didn't have any of this knowledge as a kid training at all. I wish I, Same. <laughs> like I made yeah. it, I made it through sports with the, the, the tiny, tiny fraction of, of information and knowledge around training and diet, uh, which is like, was pretty much none. Uh, and, and was okay. You know, I wasn't a great athlete, but I was okay. But, but I was also the athlete that man, I, because I didn't have a lot of natural gifts, I worked hard. And if I had the resources or the tools or the knowledge that we have now, when it comes to training, like an athlete, I God, I really wish what I would what I might have been able to 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 have done, you know, as a young athlete who would who would put the well, work in. Would have squeezed so much more out of you and your potential. Well, yeah. especially when and we talked about this the other day on the podcast about you know when you're at the like high school level, which is as far as I made it. Right, I was just playing in high school. The uh, it's one thing to be a, a great shooter in basketball or to have great handles with that, but your athletic abilities trumps that at that level at that level if you are just that much faster that much more explosive you can accelerate decelerate yeah. jump higher than 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 all of your peers even if you're not the greatest shooter the greatest ball handler you're like the best player on the team because of because of that and i wish i i wish i had those those tools to have been able to apply that because i think my work ethic would have allowed me to surpass a lot of people yeah. because i was definitely not better than the people that had those natural gifts already and i was just relying a little bit on my hard work and effort to try and keep up and i didn't have this like science-based approach of training to get me better well, I, god I, I, wish I wish I, I had that i wish i knew this as an early trainer i didn't know any of this <laughs> even as an early trainer yeah. i knew strength training uh correctional exercise <laughs> No real understand functional training to me back then was 
balancing on things. Like, then, you know, no matter yeah. what workout exercise we're doing, if you're balancing one on something, leg and yeah, it's functional. I had no idea until the later half uh, of my career and when I started applying it to myself. So I wanted to learn through that. And then I saw the value with using this with clients and I would scale things down and apply a little bit. Like I remember with my elderly clients, having them just practice, like just, just jumping in place without even a full squat. And then them seeing the carryover to the other lifts, the other workouts, and then their just overall function. I mean, you could scale it way back. It could be as simple as like throwing a light, you know, medicine ball even it would, would help develop the power. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people don't realize what it does to the body and how it develops. I remember when I did hang clean, there was a stint I did hang cleans for a while. And my goal, I don't remember what my goal was I wanted to get up to two, I don't remember what was something with a hang clean. And the idea was to get me better at throws for judo and jujitsu. And then I remember developing like bigger traps. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to get well, well, muscle that, development for it. I think a lot of people don't consider fast twitch uh, contraction yeah. in, in general. And like, that's like a whole um, sort of uh, ocean of potential on its own of just um, moving quickly, stimulates Listen, the muscle in a completely different it's way. It's the difference between being a powerful tractor and being a drag car, they both have a lot of horsepower. Okay. They look very different. Like a tractor is slow and they can pull a lot of weight, but a drag car, you, you, I mean, that's, that thing takes off and it's scary. It's explosive. It's scary, right? That's a skill that you have to train or you will lose. And if you lose enough of it, it will compromise your ability to be strong, to develop muscle, to be fit. It'll compromise all that stuff. So you could literally be a fit, muscular, older person who has trouble with, you know, doing a jumping jack because it feels jarring on the body because you don't have that. that, I, that I do skill. think though, it's important to note that the, like, and to Justin said this, right. About the, the original mass performance was about laying that foundation of strength. Like that does come first, right? Of like course. Yep. speed and power is like the greatest, have have strength. is the greatest expression of strength. And so I think the mistake that a lot of like newbies or general pop people make is wanting to be look like you know said athlete and so therefore they train you know all these athletic you know movements and they don't have a solid foundation first and so it's important that you lay that foundation first before you Listen, try and get the greatest expression of it of all of the yep. of the workout modalities that exist of all of the ways of working out and they're all bastardized in 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 popular media like most workout plans programs and in, in mainstream media from a trainer perspective, from a coach perspective, people that understand workouts, they suck, okay? But nothing has been more bastardized than power training. <laughs> nothing. If you look at mainstream workouts, do you know where you see people attempt power training? In cardio class, workout, get lean, targeting women type classes. That's where you see jump boxes and shit like that. But it's so bastardized that it's literally a... They can, they can do whatever they want. It doesn't even matter the exercise. It's all about sweating and getting tired. The only time you see power exercises being performed in these, you know, mainstream, like I said, workout gyms and facilities and on, you know, the, on the internet <laughs> is for crap like that. Mm -hmm. That's there's nobody does power training properly unless you're looking at a coach training an athlete and they know what they're doing. So this has yet to even go mainstream, but when it does, it's going to be amazing. Then yeah. you're going to really see people really take things to another level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen I've seen this firsthand uh, training high school athletes, and just uh, what a difference it is when you remove the fatigue element as you train, and yeah. then you apply that out on the field. Um, it, it, and their their output is so much greater, and their movement is so much sharper uh, because it's it's been so much. Uh, the focus has been very deliberate. And, and the body responds to how you train it. And so it doesn't yeah. make any sense to me to keep training it to, uh, when you're under fatigue, you lose a lot of control. Yep. Uh, and, and so, yes, there's time to stress uh, these movements under fatigue. Uh, obviously, that's under competition. But if you, I'm just under the camp now even more so that uh, training that without fatigue, it, it leads to such a better result for an athlete. Well, fact. I know that this is part of, uh, you know, you, you're your bone you have to pick with CrossFit and, yes. you know, 
uh, UFC MMA type of training because there's a lot of young athletes that have now adopted that way of training for for mm-hmm. football and and sports in general and it's like it's such a terrible way and and they they may not think it's terrible because they get stamina mm-hmm. from it and they build a little bit of strength and so they're better off have done that than nothing at all but it's like man there is such a better approach it's like watching a bunch of people <clears throat> hammer nails with the screwdriver but it works. I got the nail on the wall. It's like you have no idea. There's yeah. a way better way to do. This. I know, and it's really not. It's not mainstream. It's not like yeah. uh, taught. Uh, barely in any other coaching. Like I, I just haven't seen any other schools really. That was why, I, like Brian Cool, I thought it was. I was like, wow, finally somebody that's voicing this and is applying it and has been doing this since day one. Yeah. It was mind blowing to me because that's kind of how I always saw it. Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, three days left for the brand new MAPS program launch. MAPS Performance Advanced. This is a hardcore, athletically-minded workout program for strength, power, and speed. Also, there are special segments in there, in there for grapplers. You do jiu-jitsu or wrestling. There's segments in there for athletes with lots of who require lots of rotational power. Maybe baseball players, of course, there's speed and power segments in there. You'll love this program. There's three days left for it, and it's on sale, and you get free stuff thrown in. Here's what you get. If you go to mapsp2.com, use the code PALAUNCH, that'll give you $80 off, and you're going to get for free grip strength reference guide and eat for performance thrown in there for free. All right, back to the show. Speaking of like the, the progression of all this, so I've been, I'm, I'm putting a personally a focus, a specific focus on starting to develop some agility, but I have to focus on lateral stability and strength first because I lack that. Okay. Big time. Cause I love deadlifting, I love squatting, I love those, you know, those basic movements. So I'm like, I've identified this, like my lateral stability isn't great. So I've had to regress, regress, regress. <laughs> so you catch me at the gym right now doing the adductor, the abductor. That's that's oh, to start. I literally am on the yeah. abductor. Are you good machine. girl, bad girls? And uh, yeah, and I'm in there, and it's like as regressed as it can get because I need to build a little bit of strength. And then next, I'm going to start doing stuff on the field. But I'm you know on the inner field of the gym, not outside field. Don't get don't get carried away. <laughs> but I'm I'm at the gym working out, and but the gym that I go to over here, UFC <laughs> Fit, I get recognized at least two or three times when I'm in there. So this is also an ego check. So I'm like, I put my headphones on. Do you on, even think And that I'm that, like, I'm doing the machine. You know, do you even this. think that's an appropriate regression for that? Like, I don't even know if I would even, even I mean, start you I mean, I, I also do two blocks. I also do, but, but because it's so easy and, and I can work on end range of motion, which is a challenge for me. So for me, what ends up happening is when I come out, I, I, I all of a sudden lack strength. So the machine is so controlled. And this is just, I'm only going to do this for a, a couple of weeks, just kind of get that contraction out there to connect. I found I can connect to it a little bit better and then I'm going to move on to some other stuff. But, yeah. you know, I just feel like that's the most worthless machine in the gym. It's like, yeah. I just think that even for functional purposes, I feel like there, I would do something with your, your body uh, you, ver, that's not in oh, a machine yeah. to, especially oh, yeah. when got weird real quick, huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you got uh, nervous. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no, I just, I mean, I, Justin, would you, does that, you would, I would never regress to the, yeah, well, like machine. he mentioned he was doing like lateral sled drags yeah, and things yeah. like that. I mean, I would definitely have a movement aspect to it. Uh, laterally, especially first, if the desired outcome was a there's a lack of strength. It does athletic sense. Per- pursuit. No, yeah, it's it, literally I got to connect to this for a second, get a little bit of a pump. This is super controlled, super like I can just do this to try and feel what I'm trying to feel, and then apply it. I'm somewhere. so gonna send the video guys there to catch video. Of me doing that <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> never let you live that. <laughs> That's how it starts. I do the whole stack, <laughs> the whole stack, bro. I don't even. Am I at least I'm gonna do the stack? <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah. No, but I'm. I'm like. I'm looking around like, please don't let anybody recognize. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's don't like, make eye contact. That's the rule. Yeah, I hope somebody saying. captures it. Oh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Also, I do want to say this. Uh, you know. We've, you know, we've prophesized a few things here on the podcast. Um, and, uh, this one is just, it's, it's becoming so obvious and so true now. I, I, it's gotta be at least probably early days, nine years ago, eight years ago, where we talked about the health and longevity benefits of creatine. And back yeah. then we actually got mocked. I remember people talking about, oh, it's a bodybuilder supplement. Yeah. What are you talking about? Driven it just builds muscle or whatever. 
I tell you what, dude, the, the wellness space, the, the, the neural health space, the longevity space, creatine is becoming the hot supplement all of a sudden. Mm, what are you talking know? about? Yeah, dude. And we, we were saying that a long time ago. Do you remember? We actually, it was the, uh, it was the original studio Yep. when we actually got, uh, samples of just pure monohydrate in a in a brown bag remember that was going to be what we were going to do yeah. we were going to oh, do yeah. that was the inspiration mm -hmm. yeah. we wanted to do like a recyclable bag and it'd be just plain old creatine monohydrate mm -hmm. nothing special about it and just branded and we actually got samples and we're looking at I forgot doing about that, that. uh-huh that was or, I did still, have a chance at a supplement. I coming. mean, still to this day, it's probably the yeah. only one you could convince me there to was. to want to mess with because of the the simplicity of it, how easy it would be to source, to do all those things. The uh, downfall of it from our business uh, is that it's just the margins are we're, we, so terrible. Terrible. Yeah. yeah, we are. We're probably a few years away. I'd say five at the most away from creatine becoming like ultra mainstream. Everybody's got to take it. Yeah. It's good for longevity, good for your brain, good for your organs. I feel like it's getting like multivitamin stuff. I'm telling you, it is. People are tagging me all the time now because we've been I've been preaching this forever. And they're they're tagging me and going, Oh, this person said that. This and they're not even they're just a neuroscientist. Oh, and this person said it. They're a cardiologist. And this person said it. They're a, it's blowing up. What's that? What's that? Doug? This is a chart that shows the Google trends of how often creatine has been searched in the last 10 years. Oh, so wow. where's oh, that man. spike right there? The spike is in 2022. Yeah, so look at that. 2021, oh, wow. basically after 2020. Yeah. Yep. Interesting uh, what that massive spike right that's there. That's because that's when the that's when the longevity people were started talking about it. What, the, like literally you can pinpoint that date that that's like when, I don't know about uh, that date, but I know that I mean, it's that's relatively a, recent. That's a massive spike. Uh look at look at the line, like relatively Yeah, stable. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it has the, the one of the greatest spikes in its history and it's staying up there kind yeah. of. Yeah. Interesting. What's that exact hmm. date there? That big spike? 11 22? It's in January. Oh, January. January of what? 2022. Interesting. Oh, remember that on, on that episode I said that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I find that really, uh, I find it's that super interesting. That I mean, you're talking yeah. about almost, it's more than double, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. That's cool. You can look that up. More than double. Huh. So many cool things on the internet. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's going to be put, it's going to be put in multivitamins. It I think be, it already is. I think some people are. Oh, it'll it. be in all multivitamins. Yeah. It's going to be in, be in cereals, in think? care homes. Yeah. You're going to see like care homes, especially the elderly. You're going to see uh, doctors recommending it for surgery recovery to help the body heal. It's going to be skincare. You can see people using it in skincare because creatine produces ATP, which is in every cell. Every cell needs that that energy. I wonder what percentage of the population um, after you know, all is said and done, maybe it's like, yeah, like a year or two after the pandemic, like literally started to start doing their own research because they're so frustrated. That's with probably medical advice. <laughs> yeah, like, like this is not working. This yeah. dietary <laughs> guidelines, not working. Yeah, you know, dude. all these medications not working, you know, what else is there? And yeah. then, you know, hopefully they found some, uh, information out there that was a little better. Yeah. Dude. Speaking of the like, pandemic and stuff, I just read an article three out of every thousand people with COVID will have COVID for a month or longer. And so, and then, and I'm reading the comments and I'm just, there's a split between people who are like making fun of the vaccination of the people like, do I need to get a booster type of deal? Uh, but what these people don't realize is that's, it's, it's almost certainly connected to low vitamin D levels. Mm -hmm. Almost certainly if your vitamin D levels are low and you get a viral infection, your mm -hmm. odds of having a long fight are far higher. Which, what, I mean, what's already the percentage of that? I know magnesium's like 65% plus of the population are deficient. Well, optimal in that. Vitamin, vitamin D, D is a lot, but low is, I don't know yeah, what at least percentage is susceptible, would be. yeah. I don't know. But if you're low, you're, you don't want to get any viral infection, especially a respiratory one. It's going to be, a, you're, going to, you're going to be in for a, a long haul. It's mm -hmm. not going to be, uh, by the way, low vitamin D, you know, just because you're out in the sun a lot, I'll give it, I'll use my dad as an example. I talked about this already. My dad's always outside. He he hates being indoors. He's always outside, but because we have dark skin, I don't. We don't convert as much of the sunlight uh, to vitamin D. Well, I also have a theory about that too. It's what I've said about me is like if you were somebody who was out in the sunlight a lot so much, your body is adapted Maybe to changed that. To how and so just to, just you being uh, not as much is a what is it? 
Wow, I didn't even realize that was that bad. I knew it was high. <clears throat> yeah, 42% of adults are deficient. Yeah. I, exa- the, I exaggerated and said 50. Doug, do me a which favor. I don't know what uh, guidelines are using for vitamin D. Because yeah. oh, the like guidelines, RDA is low. It's not good. Yeah. Doug, yeah, it's look not up, optimal. Look up vitamin D deficiency symptoms. Trip off this. Because uh, I want it's people- like everything. <laughs> well, no, like, I want people to hear yeah, this because- yeah. Energy, skin, recovery. Like, Well, no, there's like, some up there that, that people might not realize. Uh, I've had clients like this where they were on- I mean, medications, muscle pain, bone pain, increased sensitivity to pain, tingly, pins and needles, cessations, hands or feet, muscle weakness, uh, Interesting. waddling while about, walking. T- tingly waddling? Pins. Yeah. And then what it doesn't say in that one is also depression, anxiety. Depression, anxiety. So is the ultimate extreme, what's rickets uh, the, the deficiency of? That is that is vitamin D. That is D. vitamin D, yeah, right? Or, yeah. yeah. Okay. If yeah, I'm not mistaken, rickets. that's like an old disease. Doug, what's rickets? Is that the like <laughs> shake like they shake? I, what's no, this? I think no, it's, it's bone, weak, weak bones. Huh? Like bowed legs, I believe. Doug, look rickets? up rickets. Yeah, look it up because oh, I, I, I think it's. I thought it was like you when you have like kind of the like when you like. It's trimble. Northern European uh, country. No, it's yeah. when your bones are malformed, I think, from lack of vitamin Should D. Oh, wow. I, the softening and weakening of bones in children. I did not know that. Bro, there's so some old diseases out there that people don't get anymore, like the mumps. <laughs> oh yeah, the mumps. so people don't get. There's nobody you know that that gets rickets anymore. That's pretty Scurvy, rare. Scurvy, you know the old pirate one. Yeah, it's pretty rare for somebody to get rickets. I'd nowadays. imagine that we pro- probably because we would see the signs early on now and then be able to supplement way early before. It yeah, would, and they put probably... it in formula. They if you breastfeed, they tell you to supplement mm-hmm. to give it to your kids. Mm-hmm. Like we were told by a general doctor to give our kids vitamin D mm-hmm. to supplement, but it's mm-hmm. in, it's in it's in formula and in milk um, specifically for this reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so these are the uh, the. You know, the deformities, thickening of ankles, wrists, knees, bowed legs, soft skull bones, rarely bending of the spine, dental mm. problems, things mm-hmm. like that. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah that's not good. No, no. no. You definitely don't want the the, the rickets. So, Doug, I, want, I mean, uh, uh, Justin, I want to hear this because it's been in our notes for a little while, and I guarantee you this was something you put in the notes. <laughs> what, what is because it? Because no way in hell Adam put this there. Yeah. What is... Shia LaBeouf in cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Dude, it's Shia LaBeouf, right? Shia, Shia LaBeouf. Shia, Shia, you guys Shia, know who Shia. he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah actor. Yeah, yeah. So there was this um, choir that did a, a video that, that they made this whole like song about it's the actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. And it like, it was just th- the most bizarre video I've ever seen. I just was trying to bring it up and I didn't know where to throw in conversation, obviously. So he, he wasn't a cannibal. He didn't actually eat. Something. No, it was oh, like, God. like they made it and it's this performance and it's, it's just one of those, like you're, you're kind of uh, showing your friends like weird videos and like this made no sense, but it also was like, it was like a good song, but it was like a very random um. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I just thought it was. Weird oh, now I want to watch this. And crazy. Doug's pulling it up right now. And Shia LaBeouf actually shows up at the end of it too, which was like it felt like they're like making fun of him in this whole like music. Um, yeah, the, ensemble. So he was a part of it. He He's, was a part of it. So he was okay. in on the the the, oh, okay. the goof. So, so I I'm um is it old? Oh yeah, 2014. Yeah, it's old. Uh, I'm not sure if this. Oh yeah. This is it. 2014. Huh? This is the video here. Yeah. I just I wanted to expose you guys to it. I guess whoa, in the whoa, audience, whoa. like whoa. this, this is, this exists for a second. Said the gay men's what? Yeah, hold on. Now I know why Justin was watching. Can we back up for a second? <laughs> Justin Google. My friend showed YouTube. me this. I blame him. I bet, I bet, I bet he did. Videos of yeah. gay men. Hey, this is what uh, I got. Justin, uh, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I can't hear it. Want to but... play it? Here goes. Yeah. yeah. He's gaming on you. Uh, This is such like a stoner video. Like, how do you get, how do you get all these people together to make something so ridiculous as that? That's what I, 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 like my mind was just running and running and running, trying to figure it out. Like the amount of people paid to come do this, 84 million views. Do you realize how close Justin was being to a theater? Yeah, theater nerd percent. Like, he decided. Yeah, I just football. barely made it. Out I believe alive. when him and he his buddy, hey, when him and his buddies get together and they do these things, this is the type of stuff they reenact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. or they try and come up with their own. You know what no. I'm saying? Like 100. percent I mean, if it's do. funny, yeah, I'm like, I'm in. I just that, that is crazy. Like, how does something like that even get created? Like, 
you're you, you're not going to spin it off into some sort of business, right? Oh, like, yeah. 84 it's, million views. I mean, that's that it, that happened, right? But right. Do, do you really go in it going like, hey, we're going to do this and it's going to get 84 million views know. and that's going to pay for all these people? so random. It's so obscure. I think it's just so compelling the, that way. You know? By the way, like, what? Shay LaBeouf, so I've been interested in him recently because you, you guys know his story. Yeah, recently, yeah about right? Catholicism and stuff like he, that. He yeah. was, we might have talked about this, but he yeah, was going to play Padre Pio, yeah. went and lived with the 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 monks mm -hmm. and became, he's like hardcore now yeah, he's hardcore like the Catholic. old school old school stuff whatever he it's watches called. the latin he, he yeah. was a latin mass yeah. and he's like he's like super converted and yeah everything. pretty wild story mm -hmm. but anyway that's trippy yeah, yeah so, so he went from so this, you're welcome yeah, yeah that's it's <laughs> a random video for you guys thank you enjoy. so much Justin. see when i yeah. see that that's so what gets my wheels turning is like i want to know the history of that like i want to know like how that came to be and whose idea was it and why did they do it what was the desired outcome of it uh-huh like I, I just I can't watch something like that just be entertaining and laugh mm -hmm. about it. I go like, okay, wait a second. Like, who creates this? For what reasons? Like, what is? What are you thinking when you do yeah. that? Like, you just I'm attracted I mean, or, to or, weird content. You or know? is it just like you got that kind of money where you're just like, hey, fuck it, let's just spend ten thousand dollars on <laughs> I people. Do that. I want to be with you guys one day. We're all just hanging around and we're like, this is. We guys let's just do. make a really well, obscure video. So, cool video. Yeah. so that Robin Big is like was one of my all time favorite shows uh, because of that. Like I used to always say, like, oh man, if I'm ever that rich, I'm, that's how I'm gonna like blow my money. Is like just doing cool shit. Yeah, weird cool stuff. weird shit. What like would you that. do? What would be one of the first things you did? It well, I mean, you guys. Let's say you get so much money, right? It doesn't matter. And, and and but you have to come up with some random idea. I feel like you're you? gonna learn uh, how to race some kind of crazy car. Yeah, I would do stuff like yeah. that for sure. I, I want to see you on the pro go kart racing circuit. Stupid. <laughs> I mean, you start. Out. I mean, that's how they all start, right? You start. You start off in the, like the go karts, and then a lot of them do those like uh, mini trucks. Those go karts yeah. are fast, by the way. The, the, oh, the high yeah. level ones. Oh yeah, and you're so close to ground. That's it feels terrifying. faster. Yeah. Than, dude. yeah. I did. I mean, my my uncle had one when I was little, and so I I did I did drive. Yeah, I would do so. You know that uh, you're talking about when I was in my twenties. I thought that way, and I mean now I, I have the capability to do all these ridiculous things that I do. I choose not to do it, right? So I'm not. I think that's when you're you're that age. I'm, I'm into that stuff. Is there a skill you'd want to learn? Any, either either one of you guys a skill that you would if you had the time, like if you had all the time, would jujitsu? You... Oh, okay. Yeah, I would do it, but I would do it quietly because I feel like everybody does it, and I don't like. I, uh, I, yeah. I hate that. That's yeah. part of why I don't do it right now because everybody does. Because everybody does it, mm, yeah. but yet I really want to do it, so I'm torn. Uh, you should go do so, another. Go you should go that. do another grappling art that's not like a little more obscure, like, well, like Russian. Song so or. I would jujitsu or boxing. Mm. I would love to box. I would mm. love to. I would love to, and not. I don't even have to get in the ring and do rounds and stuff like that. As much as I, the skill of it, mm -hmm. the skill of being able to throw a punch really efficiently is such a valuable skill oh yeah it is. yeah so i think that between between that and jujitsu i think would be one of the the mm. coolest things obviously i think jujitsu is one of the best because every fight i've ever been in in my life always ends up on the ground yeah. and so having the skill to be able to defend yourself or put somebody in a choke or a hold uh it's much bigger than you i think jujitsu mm -hmm. would be better but boxing too though like it may not even end up on the ground if i got really good hands yeah. you yeah. know and my length like so if i got that kind of skill even if you were great at jujitsu, it might be able yeah. to put you down before you even get me to the ground. Yeah. So I think those two would be I'd cool. like to learn uh, scuba diving. Scuba? You did, liar. I brought that up. Because I'm terrified of it. Oh, I was, was going to say, say, you're such a was... liar. I wanted to do that. No, 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 no. When I lived out I, in Monterey, there was a- I would like to, like to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like <laughs> we're so talking. Do we, do we so have these to just things, like, throw So these throw are things we, we actually it? would never do. Yeah. But, but we well, no, I mean, I mean, if I had all the time and energy, then I would, because I could constantly, you know what I mean? Because it would be too exhausting for me now. It would take too much time, and it terrifies me. Yeah. But if I had nothing else to do, I could dedicate like, okay- this is like, this is a personal growth thing. Yeah. I got to get in the open ocean. And I don't know if I believe this. I, I, I'm telling you. I brought this up like, you know, it was a few years ago. I wanted us to do that. I don't remember what, what it was. I think it's for- so Were you in a shark uh, cage? No. No? God, one step at a time, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in a pool, right? Yeah, you're starting to pool. Trying to get yeah, a feel for but it. But I want to I overcome that fear. You know what I mean? I feel like that's so scary. Like you're in the yeah. ocean, mm -hmm. you look around. So it's, it's more like that for you. It's not so much that you like. It would be, it would feel so empowering that to I overcome that. that. Yeah, dude. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's I mean. a different ask, I think. I think uh, asking me like, what's something that I fear I don't like doing that I'd try and what I like, would love to challenge myself to overcome, yeah. it would be a different thought process. 
saying what would I want to train or or, okay. or skill. Well, do you have a different up. answer then? Well, I, I would have to think about it because I don't. There's not a lot of things. You're not scared of anything? Yeah, I'm not really scared of a lot of things actually. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Except movies. Well, hey, no, I mean, I'm sure there is something, right? But I, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I try and movies. operate from a place of running towards fear, right? Because yeah. on the other side of that resides success, and so I'm a, I'm a big believer of. All right, Jim Quick. If I'm, <laughs> I didn't Jim Quick that. That's the fucking direction. That's the actual. That's quote. the actual direction. Of the well, quote. you know what's on the other side of success? Yeah, not overcoming the fear. It's fear that would have been it right there. <laughs> I said the quote the way it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I think that's a, a big part of of life is is finding those things and and finding purpose in life is to find those things that we're it most, is. That's why it's we're most bad. afraid of, we're most challenged, and, and running. I feel running like I would them. be so much of a better person if I got over that fear. What about mm. you, Justin? Do you have one? Well, too. I mean, it's it's uh, this is more on the artistic side, so I'm not like, you know, physically. Yes, I have similar kind of stuff. Like, I'd love to learn, uh, you know, more combat kind of focused skills but um i for me i want to learn how to like produce music and like get more in like the the back end recording side of it and learn how to like so um, what does a music producer do so are they're the ones that they take all the different artists and then they take the tracks and they make it yeah okay. they, they blend it all together they they add sounds that's and they, the dude in the other just, room with the buttons yeah that you see on tv okay i mean um yeah Dr. yeah Trey. Like, i yeah. just thought that would be really Interesting, because I'm not like the best musician, uh, and and I just, I, but I definitely have an ear for things. And so if I hear something, I'm like, ooh, something would go well with this. Mm -hmm. And like, I want to, I was like sort of meddling with my son's DJ um, table and too, because I got that for him. And really, it was like because I kind of wanted to play with it. <laughs> I love know? that. Like, <laughs> you buy your kid what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I want to kind of learn drums. Like I don't want to get like super good. Or, <laughs> at like one specific instrument. I just know that's, I don't know. I, that would be cool. I, I would just like to kind of blend it all together and then and we'll pull see. people in. I would do that. We that are do, really good. We could do Mind Pump Music Productions, a supplement company for me, and then you yeah. want to open an ice cream shop. <laughs> yeah. What you said that one time. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's true, by the way. Yeah, I'm not it, making this up. Adam, literally, I'm always like, I want to do supplements. The yogurt shop. Yogurt I want to do supplements, yeah. right? And snow cones. And, and like, I both. want to do a, a frozen cones. yogurt. Frozen snow yogurt and yeah. snow cones. Snow cones from Hawaii. So weird. If you've ever had shaved ice in Hawaii, it's like nowhere else in the world. So shaved shaved ice with slash yogurt shop crushes someone uh, will do that someone yeah. will steal my idea what do you guys <laughs> i think they exist <laughs> <laughs> yeah somebody's got it someone's got it done it. done it i haven't seen one not with that kind of shaved ice and not like good. why is it that we can't find hawaiian shaved ice around here you can't what do I they got like it, what are they using it's machine? just not as good is yeah, it a special it's, machine yeah, yeah it's a special machine okay yeah, yeah it's a special machine that, that i'm sure there is some i just i'm not we're not all probably big snow cone guys going around looking for the best snow cone <laughs> shop. i would get it dude when i'm in hawaii i, I, I think that place that down on lincoln in, in willow glen i I think I think they do. I've never actually had it, but uh, that's the one that has lines out the door for. Because every time I get a snow cone here, it's just a fucking ice cube with like yeah, like, like it's terrible. It. It was terrible. Yeah. yeah. So what? Okay. What? What do? What do you guys want to be remembered for? Hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Like, like, like what do you want to be remembered legacy? for? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. what? When, when people talk, well, you're long. You've been long dead, or you don't have to be long dead. You've been gone for a while, or okay. something like that. And people remember, talk about you. Like, what do you want to be? What do you want to be remembered for? You no. ever think about that? Yeah, I do. Obviously, I think about that with my son and so that. So that's stuff I don't think about. I never thought about those types of things before until him. And then that stuff pops in my head every now and then. And I think about that. So have you ever thought about well, like- Well, what, what is yours? Why don't you start? Because I gotta think about that. Um, two things come to mind for me. Uh, one, for sure, uh, being a great father. Mm -hmm. Like that, of, of all the things- that Check. Would, that would be- Good job. You're, you're the there. number yeah. one. Yeah, but really though, like I like I appreciate that you feel that way because you know me and you would mm -hmm. say that. But I, I like want to be like no known for that. Like, like oh my God. famous for it? Yeah. Like that's almost like that. Almost wow. like, yeah, like that. That's, I mean, look, we have a platform where millions of people know oh, wow. who we are. Okay. Uh, what, if, what I want them to know about me, number one, is that I'm a great father. That oh, would be the great. same. And then probably my second one is my business acumen because mm -hmm. that's something that I care more about that than being a good trainer. Mm. A lot of people think that like it was used to be funny to me when people like jab at me with like trainer stuff. I was like, I don't, Dude. Even, I don't even care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not even, like, <laughs> cool. You you think you're smarter or better than me? That's not a thing I really care about. Like I happen to have fallen into that profession. I love it, but mm -hmm. I I take more pride in on the on the business acumen side, and so. Father one, and then business acumen would probably be probably oh, wow. a close second. Yeah, I don't know. I have a kind of a funny one because it's it's literally the last award you want to get when you're like done with your team 
at the end of the year, you get like MVP or you get like defensive player of the year. Or like, like, what do yeah. you want to best Most improved? One? Most improved. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and mainly because in, in terms of like seeing growth. So when you so dive in different directions. You want people to be like, he sucked. But, but man, <laughs> he sucked. He look, got way better. Look what happened. <laughs> he kept fucking like getting it's, after it, getting better. A little better, train better. that could. His name, Justin That's Andrews. It. That's got, it. Got better. Yeah. <laughs> he's dead. He's even getting better at yeah, being dead. Yeah, dude. You know, like that's what I want. Like, I'm just somehow. Yeah. This guy's so most improved. He's probably getting so better right improved. now. So most improved. Yeah, you guys are still talking about me you know, as I'm dead. That's awesome. I like, I like that one. What about yeah. you, Doug? You think about that? I mean, you're closer to that, so you got to. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> no, you're right. Not, I'm not. I'm not sure. That's actually. <laughs> I'm not the one breaking all the, the Celsius. Whole company, bro, at some point. <laughs> yeah. I don't that. give a lot of thought to what happens after I die, other than making sure that I leave behind, uh, you know, things for my daughter. Yeah. But yeah. you know, in box. life, yeah. I concern myself more with what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And like you, being a great father is definitely uh, top of the list. Um, kind of an obscure thing, though, outside of that is I've taken up calligraphy, Japanese calligraphy, a while back, and uh, I'm very serious about it. Oh, wow. I've been taking classes. I've been practicing. I've seen it. I've yeah. seen some of your yeah, stuff. Your and uh, I, I keep getting cool. better, and uh, I do think I have some innate abilities with it because oh, I've gotten a lot of comments from actual older Japanese people in these classes, and they're saying, how long have you been doing this? Um, and so, really? Yeah. So oh, great. I follow some Jap uh, Japanese and Chinese calligraphers on Instagram, and I really admire some of their work. And I would like to be known for that. Somebody I like this, this white guy who shouldn't be doing that, yeah. <laughs> but you is be the doing Eminem it. Of calligraphy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the Eminem Bro, of calligraphy. Can we put that in your bio. On your yeah, Instagram? I like it. I like it. The Eminem of calligraphy. <laughs> This is probably the best that's, title I've heard. I didn't even, you know what? That is, that's actually really interesting to me that there is such an art to that. Oh, bro, you have no idea. Somebody, I went over his house and he was showing me. That yeah. somebody could look at it and go like, oh, wow, you've been practicing this a really bro, long gotta time. you got to see the brush. Yeah. He was showing me all this. The brushes, the way you I know there's it like a super lift it off the paper and the way you stroke. Like it's it's a it's a 100% art. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's kind of cool. It's a... A little embarrassing, actually, for me to talk about. Because Why? Because it, it's kind of nerdy. But I guess we're all oh, kind of nerdy. We've already been, we've already been in my there, life. Yeah. My wife has already labeled all of us as that. And already. by the way, so I'm at an age not, now where yeah. nerdiness doesn't really matter. You, yeah, no, so, now you're just yeah, cool. It's, it's hot yeah. now. Yeah, so yeah. It wasn't Whoa. cool. It's not cool when you're 17. I, I don't know about I've that. come out about my Dungeons and Dragons. That will never be hot. You still play that? No, I don't, but I would. I like that, Doug. That's super original. That's going to be tough for Sal to come with something better or not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not nerdy. Does your wife say I'm nerdy? Too? Yes, me. Yeah, you. No, I'm just kidding. Bro. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I, I think, uh, of course, being a, big, a great father would be a great one. But I, I would like to be known for being uh, generous and for communicating um, uh, communicating the truth when uh, the truth is not popular. That's what I would like to be known. Mm. You know how lame. None of us are having to do with fitness, but that's what we do for a living. Mm -hmm. well, we, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, no, you don't want to be known as like the 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 philosopher of fitness or like one of the most you know well known fitness minds. In this, you don't, you don't care about that. that? The warrior poet. <laughs> Please don't say, say that. that. Dude. <laughs> I'm gonna punch I like you that in. title. No, dude, that's <laughs> a, for you. That's my uh, that's my bizarro version. You, so yeah. you don't you don't you don't have uh, something like that related to that. Um, no, I mean, no, I think communicating things that are not, that are right, but not popular could fall in that category too. But I, I would, you know, I, I value that. I value that anyway. Um, you know, I always find people that I've, I've always been this way. I've always seen people who were persecuted for speaking out and being the truth. And I've always felt a strong pull towards them, mm -hmm. like, and respect, you know, mm -hmm. like, and I'll give you an example. I remember learning about Muhammad Ali as a kid, um, I, there was a stint there where I was into like classic boxing. And I remember learning that Muhammad Ali, he opposed the, the Vietnam War, refused to go. So whatever you feel about that, he gave up his prime best years of boxing because of it. Yeah. They didn't allow him to box and he almost got thrown into, into jail because he believed in something so much that he said, no, I'm going to take a stand. Yeah. That uh, That's always pulled to me, you know? Yeah. I guess there's there's some of that in what we do for sure, right? Yeah. Obviously, we're, we're standing up against what a lot of people, yeah. a lot of the norms in the space. 
Yeah. And it, we're uh, not getting persecuted. Well, we're not getting persecuted. Not yeah, but you know what, though? <laughs> I mean, I, I brought this up I'm yesterday when we, were, <laughs> when we were talking to um, Jason Kalipa. I mean, obviously, we're not being persecuted for it, and so it's okay. But we, we, we do pass on a lot of money to do things with, yes. in, uh, in, with integrity opposed to just chasing. I mean, listen, when you're, when you're scaling a business – uh, the, the amount of money and revenue you make is the ultimate scoreboard. I mean, that right. is, you're winning sure. the game. If sure. That's really what it is at the end of the day. I mean, that's, that's what it is. And so we sacrifice that a lot for things that, uh, we pursuing things that we care about or we believe is right. Yeah. And we don't do things that we know. Uh, and so, yeah, we, 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 I, obviously we're not getting thrown in the gulags or some shit over what we do, but no. Hey, the, I mean, it, this is, this is the anti-protein police are going to come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I think we, we operate from a, a place like that. Yeah. You know, I so. was that kid that was like when the bully, you know, in elementary school is, is bullying a table, like a lunch, you know, table, nobody say whatever. And I'd be the one sitting there quietly and then it would just eat at me. So I'd have to I'd say something and then I'd get in a scuffle or I'd get jumped. Oh, that's a cool thing to be known for is like the, the, the defender of the week. I or could defender not, of the. It of just the, doesn't sit. I, 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 I'm, I would much more, ra I would much rather deal with the ass whooping by the bully yeah. than sitting there Same. and being quiet. It just ate at me all the time. And so, yeah, I used to get in trouble a lot for oh, stuff like bro, that because I had a big mouth. That was my nickname, Big Mouth. You just big reminded mouth. me yeah. of something. So yeah, my son is getting at this really cool. We're now at this point where we can like, I can just keep asking questions and challenging and he'll just talk, 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 Oh, talk. it's so fun. And so yesterday we're in the bath and we're talking and I'm talking to him about all the kids at his school and who he likes, who he plays with and it got around to like uh, the, the kid that's like, that's mean or the bully about that. And uh, I said, any kids that are mean or not nice with that? And he goes, he goes, he thinks, he goes, Buster. And I'm like, oh, who's who's Buster like that? And he goes, are you are you changing the name for the podcast or is this his real name? Yes, I think it's his real name. Oh, I think God. it was Buster. <laughs> Buster. Well, that's yeah. a dead giveaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oops. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Yeah. Hey, your kid's a shitty kid. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Oh my like, God. Like, be better parents. The best part of this. <laughs> the best part about <laughs> this. Parents <laughs> yeah. come hey, to the <laughs> best part about this was that already the training and it was. I haven't even said it that much. I've said it to you guys, but I have said it to him before. And Katrina and I have kind of lightly talked about it before that I, I've told her I'm going to, I'm going to teach him this way. And he says it, I don't even say anything to him. He goes, he goes, yeah, his, his mommy and daddy don't love him very much. I went, Oh, oh. My God. <laughs> oh. I said, yes, dude. Yes. That's exactly how I want my son to interpret kids that are, that are shits, that are bullies, that are bad people. Yeah, is that, bad home life. Yeah. They said, you're, you know, you're, they, they, and I tell, and I teach him to not be mean and to have empathy, to be like, Hey, you know, yeah. unfortunately he doesn't have a mommy and daddy that probably loves him as much as your mom and dad love you. And mm -hmm. so you just have to understand that inside he's hurting. You know, it's sad. It's true though. What mm -hmm. you're saying is true. Well, no, that's why I'm, that's why yeah. I want to teach him that it is the truth. And it also will, I think, in when those situations, obviously this was like a very light situation. I think he was probably, I mean, the kid, he told me the kid, you know, takes the toys and says it's mine, yeah. right? So it's not like a serious bully yet. Yeah. But at one point, he's going to have to deal with that. And I won, I won, I want him to come from a place of understanding and empathy. I think he'll handle the situation the better he understands it. When I was a ki young kid and you had a bully, I never was thinking that many layers. You didn't key. think empathy at all? No, oh. no. He's a jerk. He's an asshole. It turned more into I needed to fight, defend myself, yeah, yeah. or run and hide. It was more, yeah. that was your choices versus having a better understanding of this kid. And so maybe he breaks through and helps that kid, or maybe he knows how to avoid those situations, yep. or at least doesn't internalize them himself because- That's the big one. Right. And that's really what yeah. I want to, to come with that. But you just no, reminded me that because that just happened last night. I was that's like, so cute. <laughs> I was that's like, a, he was so cute when you came in with him. Uh, was it yesterday where you came in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little but he's walking in, it was sprinkling. Daddy, my the, the rain's messing up my beautiful hair. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, he, no, <laughs> like he didn't, bro. I said, bro. He said my beautiful yes, hair. He said my beautiful <laughs> hair. I said, bro, your hair's not even done. I like you didn't even put gel in it today. <laughs> Beautiful hair. Does he put gel in his hair? Yeah, we put. Yeah, we, we, he does it. We do. Does like, he like for you to do that? Uh, I, you know, I don't. I mean, he he knows that's part of his routine of getting ready for Bro, school. Bro, my son Aurelius does not. We cannot to wash his hair is a battle. He doesn't like water on his head at all. 
Well, Max still doesn't like going underwater or whatever, but I've, you know, he've, we've over time, like we've gotten better about that, but he's, he doesn't like being underwater. That's an area that I'm, I'm going to be challenged with. Right. So this year, hopefully we get the swim lessons. COVID thing really fucked that for me because yeah. I had get, it was getting, he was in. doing it. Yeah. yeah. And then we did, we have it. And boy, do I see a difference. No, like, we, we lay, we laid on thick now. So when he lets me wash his hair, cause you have to, right. At some point, then everybody goes up to, Oh, your hair smells so nice. Yeah. I love your hair. I'm like, everybody say something. We're going to get this too. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was so nice when I had a say in their haircuts, you know, and like now, like Ethan is completely like he's doing the mullet the rails. Right? Oh, I saw <laughs> Katrina said something about that. I was like, like uh, and, and you know, and you can't obviously you, it gets to that point where you pick realize, and choose your battles. Yeah, you realize like, he's you an individual. He's gonna, he's gonna express himself. How he's gonna express himself, but it's like, like literally, bro, like. Do you want to look like a meme? Like, <laughs> you know, do you want to look like that? Like uh, that depiction. That's the where, style like, for the kids. That it's, age, it's yeah, but that's the thing. It's it's popular. It's like his yeah. friends, and so I have to like kind of step back and be like, okay, but this is a different culture. Like they have their own little culture. I think if every dad can control their kids' hair, their son's hair, ninety nine percent of us would shave it. That's what I think. We'll just keep it real short and tight. I love that. You know? I would love to. Buzz I was. Cut. I, that's what I had. That buzz cut know, my kid's hair super years. short on the top. I think it looks just oh, nice totally and faded like, yeah, and tight totally and sharp. And it looked. Handsome. I was so excited that's for because you're living I was. Yeah. I was, yeah totally. <laughs> I was so excited. I'm probably not like a lot of dads. Maybe more like the moms in this situation. Like I was so excited to get his first haircut, to put his first outfit together. Like, I like that stuff. I care more about that than Katrina. Like, I'm particular. If he do, you his, do you pick out his outfits then when you guys go out and stuff? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I love that part. You didn't have dolls when you were a kid, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Siri, why not? <laughs> no, that doesn't no, mean, he's, you know. No, 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 no. I, I, I was into that stuff, so. So, to so say dressing him, like dressing yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you match him to, like, you guys? <laughs> Uh, sometimes he'll match me. Yeah. Sometimes if I, I don't go out of the way to really try and do that, but it, sometimes that happens where I'm like, Bro, put that's together. so cute. I had no idea. Uh, yeah. I love to put together his outfits. So, I mean, if he comes here and I didn't get him ready in the morning, then it was his mom and him. But <laughs> I'm the I, worst with that, dude. But, uh, oh, I totally. I grab like, whatever, whatever. I mean, Katrina will tell you, like, I, uh, uh, like, if we go somewhere public and she didn't take the time to do that, I'm like, come on, dude. Like, you're taking, you say so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she does. She's good about, like, that's if she so brings cute. him around, that she knows that, like, well, I'll, you know I'll what I like? Him. So now my young, my youngest. Uh, my little my little 15 month old her hair is starting to grow it's growing slowly but it's starting to grow she's got these little curls in the back which is oh cute oh we are like oh god if she can have curly hair I always wanted a curly hair little girl but anyway her hair is just long enough now where Jessica put two little tiny sprouts of pigtails. pigtails oh yeah dude just sent me pictures <laughs> that's oh, the so cute. cute little fountains coming out oh that's the cutest thing ever uh, anyway. so, hey so. I want to say something uh, Shilajit back in stock with Organifi that that blew finally, out finally blew out yeah. not for long i mean every time they put it back up it's like psh, gone people absolutely love it absolutely love it so people will comment on it say i feel amazing i definitely notice a difference whatever and then they like the taste uh it, it's that's got to be right now one of their biggest blockbuster products I, it is I, it's funny and for people who don't know what this is just do this google shilajit with so it's a j shilajit you better spell that studies part. so it's s h a l I S H A S H I. No, I'm oh, sorry. S H I L A J I T studies. Look that up. There are a ton of actual studies on Shilaji and how it affects the hormones, muscle growth, uh, mood, like yeah. crazy. I think it's a combination of, of that, that it feels good and, and with the fact that it's in a gummy form. That I just good. think that, of the, course. Yeah. And it does. And it's like yeah, the delivery is so much better. That yeah. Way. And it has kind of a, like a black licorice or so taste. Of, I know it's like, <laughs> dude, but you're going to be consistent with it. And this matters. Right? It does matter. I get it. it I, does. I'm a pill guy. right? Well, especially with that. Cause you said this, that's the similar to like the adaptogens where it's like, the more consistent you yes. are, the, the the better the yeah. like the compounding effect versus yep, yep. like randomly taking it one time and expecting to feel this like massive yep. difference. It's like take it consistently and you should feel a right. difference. Uh, real quick, if you go to mindpumpl1.com, so what you can do is you can go in, sign up for one of the best certifications uh, around for trainers, especially if you're really into workout programming, biomechanics, developing muscle and strength. It's an incredible certification called Prescript, Jordan Shallow. It's his company. And right as of right now, you should be able to still qualify to come and listen to a live uh, recording 
and be here live with us as part of it, which uh, was never included before. So. No, that's something that we're doing, but I also want to point out for the people that can't make it to us in person, uh, there's also a record, or you could do the- Virtual. Yeah, virtual. So he does have two options, obviously. But I want to meet everybody. Yeah, yeah, no. Obviously, the in-person one, Coming you out. get to do the live Q&A yeah. with us. You have the, uh, you, if you're the first you 10, face. you'll be able to get into the studio and mm -hmm. watch a live recording. Um, and obviously those ones are, is going to be more expensive to be able to come in person and get the training from Jordan. But there is an option if you can't make it in person to still do the live stream, uh, mm -hmm. with him too. So butcher box is a company that delivers grass fed meat. Okay. Heritage pork, uh, chicken that's raised in ways that are humane, wild caught fish all to your door. So you save money and you get healthy meat that tastes good feels good, and also has a great price. And if you sign up through our link, go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, they'll actually hook you up and let you have your choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for an entire year included in your box for free, but you have to use the code mind pump. By the way, that'll also get you $20 off your first box. All right, back to the show. First question is from GG Pat. Is it okay to work out sore even after 24 to 48 hours rest? Yes. Here's the interesting thing about soreness. It, it often indicates that you went too hard in your workout. That being said, when you are sore, now this is, this is barring the extreme, right? You can be so extremely sore, you start to get, you know, waste products, uh, waste byproducts in the blood that you kill, kidneys can't filter out. Like this is an extreme case, right? But normal run-of-the-mill muscle soreness, one of the best things you could do is movement. Now, I wouldn't work out hard. Mm -mm. That's a bad idea. But what you should do is do a light workout where you're just moving the muscle, feeling it stretch and contract and getting a little bit of a pump. This will actually facilitate recovery. It actually helps the recovery process. Yeah, the biggest key to that advice right there is modifying the intensity of and still training. Still training or still doing, uh, depending on how sore I am. So let's just use the legs, for example, of like if let's say I squatted and I overreach and I'm really sore and it's time to, it's the, you know, two days later and I'm back to like, say, at MAPS anabolic format and I am back to doing another like compound lift for my legs. Uh, I'm going to choose to do that exercise. If, it, if I'm really, really sore, I might choose to do mobility work. Yeah. If I'm pretty sore and I overreached a little bit, but not so crippling bad that I'm not, I'm not I, I can still get through the movements. I'm going to do like a light you know, 50% intensity of mm -hmm. that leg exercise that day. So that's the key. And it will, it'll facilitate recovery. It's going to just, it's going to pump more blood, more oxygen, more mm -hmm. nutrients. It's only going to help you recover faster. The mistake that people make is they train still and then they overreach again. They and still go hard. Yeah, they, yeah. Go, they go hard again. And it's like, now you're not allowing the body to recover at all. That's why I like rubber bands. Uh, I tend Bingo. to like lean into that yes. a bit more because it's less uh, damaging, but also too, it just helps kind of facilitate that pump and that blood flow. Um, and yeah, if I'm really sore, I tend to like gravitate towards that or I'll hold even with the rubber band. I'll like hold poses isometrically. So the rubber bands actually like added resistance with that pose, but it just helps me to um, relieve a lot of that real tense, like tight, uh, you know, restriction I feel. No, no, this is uh, the trigger sessions of MAPS Anabolic. Um, yeah. You know, do this. Uh, you don't just facilitate recovery. Uh, now, all things being appropriate, uh, this actually amplifies muscle growth as well. So if you have a weak body part and you trained it, try this the following day. Get some bands and do some very light therapeutic exercises on that muscle with the bands and get a little bit of a pump. Watch what happens. It actually is uh, it's pretty remarkable. It's like a turbocharger to that muscle building signal. Next question is from JM Bird 76. I was re-watching some old episodes and you guys were saying how the optimal amount of protein is 0.5 to 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. Now it's one gram. Could you explain how and why the number has changed? So this is this is what we get for trying to explain nuance versus just sta saying sta yeah, the yeah. statement and sticking right to that. It's like, well, first our, off, our message is there's a difference a between what research and study says, and there's a difference between what we recommend. There's a reason why you rec we recommend one gram, one one to one, because it's fucking easy. It's yeah. easy, and nice most and people simple. fall a little short. Mm -hmm. And so, if I tell a client your goal is to be 130 pounds. 
So let's eat 130, 130 grams of protein. Very easy for him or her to figure that out or remember that. And what I know from experience is most people will have a hard time doing that. They'll probably fall a little short sometimes. And I'm not stressing out because of what the research says is ideal. Also, we didn't say 0.5 to 0.7. It's 0.6 to 0.8 if you want to be precise. Yeah. Oh. That's true. If you want to be precise. Mic drop. Okay, so here's what the data shows. 0.6 to 0.8 pounds, uh, 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 grams of protein per pound of body weight in lean individuals is the upper limit of where you're going to see benefits come from with high protein in terms of muscle growth. But there's something that's missing there. There's also the satiety producing effects of protein that are, don't show up in those studies. Eating a gram of protein, just a little more, has a much more pronounced satiety producing effect, which most people benefit from because one of the biggest challenges to eating right is just you eat, you just hungry or, or you crave food or you want to eat more. So actually, even if they don't miss this, because what Adam said is true as well, most people won't hit this, so they'll fall within that 0.6 to 0.8. But if they do hit this, what they'll probably do is eat the appropriate amount of calories because yeah. it is it makes you satisfied. Eating that much protein makes you not want to overeat. Well, back just, in the store. Think from a trainer's perspective. Could you imagine your clients trying to do the math of 0.6 or <laughs> 0.7 <laughs> grams per mm. lean body mass every time they made a food choice? Like, this is... Mm crazy it's like easy to just go yeah. 120 yeah. cool four yeah. meals divided by four there yeah it's yeah. It, it's easy so uh and uh that so that's why you've heard us we've communicated it and then there's times when sal Simplicity is wins well there's times when sal is and this is not just this this is one example of this where sal is is explaining or or regurgitating a a study to you guys and then you hear us give advice and sometimes the advice isn't exactly what the study says because we don't always just go off with I want the advice to be effective. That's right. I don't and we, want the advice to be the study. We it's always the behavioral aspect. Yeah, there's behavioral and the psychology of of these people that we factor in and experience. And so, yes, there's there's times where you'll hear us uh, talk about a study, and then you might hear advice that sounds different, uh, or maybe in your mind conflicting, but mm -hmm. it's not. It's that we're also taking that study, and then we're factoring all the other things that we know from experience, and then we've learned, oh, this is just a better approach, is to give this person this advice. It's not one's wrong or one's right. Next question is from Nels144. Is it better to build muscle, then lose weight, or lose weight, then build muscle? Well, one of them, if you do it first, will make the second one easier, mm -hmm. or the reverse, if you build do it muscle. first, they'll make the second one harder. Um, what makes the second one easier, or in other words, which one should you do you first, so that the second option is a lot uh, becomes a lot easier to maintain? Build muscle first. Yeah. If you build muscle first, you also now have sped up your metabolism. You now have a higher caloric maintenance, which makes the fat loss later mm -hmm. much easier. Now, in the reverse, you go to lose weight first. You're going to probably slow your metabolism down. Now you're going to try to build muscle without gaining the body fat that you just lost. That can be very challenging. It can be done, by the way. You could do the other way around, mm. but I don't know why anybody would want to make it that much harder. By the way, everybody does it the wrong way. Yeah. Almost nobody goes and nobody says- Nobody does this first option. Nobody but, says, I want to lose 30 pounds, such, let me build muscle. It's yeah. such a more enjoyable option. Mm -hmm. If you just look at it like enjoying the process and, um, um, you know, like looking forward to your workouts and- feeding yourself so you feel like you're actually you have performance you have strength like you're hitting on some something really uh incredible there because if you're just especially if you're just getting started yeah working out in a calorie deficit makes the Miserable. workout suck yeah you don't like it as much. You, you don't have it as energetic. It just doesn't feel good. And your day suck. You're all all day. You're yeah. wanting to eat, and you feel like you're restricting from. Yeah. So if you're a new person, doesn't it make sense to start this out in a way so that you can build a relationship with something you enjoy? Right. And then later we'll make it suck a little bit. I mean, this more sense. to me, this is a, a very clear difference between a, a young early trainer and a very experienced trainer. Totally. Mm -hmm. uh, the only trainers I know that do this are ones that have experience, that have had experience, that yes. uh, uh, that have been doing this for a long time, and they get this part. I mean, and I'm by the way, I'm guilty of being the other trainer for a long time. Right, from first half of my career, if someone came in, they wanted to lose. 
30. And by the way, you would calorie deficit them. A, a lot of that yeah. was operating from scarcity, right? Afraid that I would, I would lose the client if I didn't show them some sort of results right away. Yep. Yeah. So even, even when I started to piece together the, the understanding and the science that supports why I should build muscle first, I still operated from a place of, of fear and, and, and scarcity that, oh no, if I don't show this client who's paying me all this money to lose 30 pounds, if I can't show them a good five, 10 pounds off. That's the majority of trainers. Right it there. is. And yeah. so you got to get past that. And the way you get past that is communicating that better to the client, like what we're talking about right now, why, hey, we want to build muscle first because it's going to make this more enjoyable. It's going to be easier for you when you decide to, to lose body fat. It is going to be more sustainable afterwards. And so it is the better approach of, of going this. In fact, it's probably the only approach because maybe we could, maybe if you only had a little ways to go, you could cut enough calories and move enough just to get there. But boy, is that no, tough you, to Usually what happens is somebody comes in, wants to lose 30, 40 pounds, they go the lose weight first option. They lose some weight. They plateau. It mm -hmm. sucks. They try harder. It's very hard. What's going on? My body's resisting. Quit. Quit. They don't even get to the second part. Yeah. But if you do I'm it the out. other way around, it's it's different. It's you 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 see results. You feel stronger. Oh my god, everything's moving in the right direction. Then when you cut, you don't hit those plateaus. The hardest part about doing it the right way, though, is the psychological part. Of course, it, yeah. that is, and that as you're not good, losing weight, a good coach and trainer, that is what you're helping your client with. Is you you're helping them navigate through the psychological hurdles of, oh my God, we've been working out for a month now and the scale is not moving. It's like, even though that is what you want to see for this weight loss client, because if you've done a good job- yeah. Address you, the difficulty first though. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you want to tackle that head on. So you set them up for success versus having to address all of that later totally. on. You're you're in the hole. Next question is from Lindsay One Dove. What are the pros and cons of a shoulder versus elbow rack on a front squat? So, Justin, are, do they mean is it yeah, elbow is rack this? a zercher? No, it means this. Yeah, I know because like I was thinking zercher too, but no, yeah, no, no, this no. is. Oh, so that's the bodybuilder this style. Is the bodybuilder yeah, yeah. style. Have so shoulders. Shoulders. Across the shoulders. Yeah, there's a difference. One of them. One of them means you got poor shoulder mobility. Shoulder and wrist. Yeah. Wrist. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, as far as the front squat and the muscles target are concerned, it doesn't matter, right? They both hit the lower body exactly the same. The the elbow rack position, that, or the, like what you would see like a weightlifter do with the fingertips under the bar, elbows up, that's a higher skill form of a front it's squat. It's a precursor. It's really, it's an right. in-between. Um, you you want to be able to get and achieve that uh, in order to then transition into something like a jerk press, you know, from there. Right. And so it's like, it, or, uh, it's or setting clean, you up. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of setting you up uh, with Olympic lifts. Uh, for you know, if I, if I want to make that point, so it's it's kind of like one of those um, those in betweener moves, like uh, the muscle up, for instance, yeah. for like uh, gymnasts. So yeah. it's, I never, it's I never, also like it's also uh, it's like uh, somebody elevating their heels to squat deeper. Um, I mean, if you can't get past ninety degrees without elevating your heels, there's there's obviously something there. There's a mobility issue there, right? We lack ankle mobility that allows to do that. Um, but if all you care about is building the quads and the glutes and you want to get a deeper squat. You want to just do a leg workout. Right, and, or, and do a leg workout, then then yeah, sure, squat shoes are fine. But what? But if you have to do it that way, the the con of that is that there, it's telling you that there is a limiting factor there. You limit the wrist or shoulder mobility. And so, okay, from a muscle standing standpoint, it doesn't really matter much, but from a general health mobility, uh, like you should address that. It is a high skill movement though. Like the average person getting them to support a barbell in the, in the shoulder, like the bodybuilder style is hard enough. That's even hard for people getting them to learn how to hold it in that rack position. I never taught a client how to do that. Um, because the skill, the skill required and the training required just to get the barbell into position, uh, it just didn't, there was no, I, I, we didn't see tons of benefit in the sense that it prevented us from doing a front squat. So I, I, I always taught this way. Now, if I'm teaching, if I know in the future, we're going to learn how to do a clean, then you want to learn that because how are yep. you going to get the, how are you going to hold the bar up you're gonna your shoulders? You're going to be able to catch it appropriately. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise you throw yeah. the bar, but catch it with your teeth. Oh, like. interesting. See, I would, I would, to regress that, uh, early on, I would probably fold my arms. Now to regress that, I would probably use straps or a towel. Yeah. I would still yeah. teach the Pinch front grip. You know, yeah, I would take. I would teach the front right position, and then I just allow, allow them to roll roll towels or wrist. Or, I did that too, and then and then yeah, to, and too. to hold it just to teach that position. You know, to to be able to do to be able to do that. But to me, as a as a coach and a trainer, if my client 
can't do that and I see that it's because their wrist can't break enough or they can't keep their elbows up because of their, their lack of shoulder mobility, to me, that's the, the big thing to take away from the, as a coach is like, yeah. oh, okay, there's some work to yeah. be done. Now, here. if they're talking about, you know, Zercher, um, you know, that's just that's like, very different. Yeah, very different exercise. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess we don't have clarity on if that's what Yeah, so just to bring that up because uh, – I mean, you get a lot of benefit from that too, like for anterior reasons, but also your core is very much more activated and that's that's going to isolate that You quite get a bit. more glutes with a Zercher uh, position just because the lever is a little longer as you squat down. You're going to use more of that, that extension. The load's more centric. And more centric. Oh, I didn't even yeah. read it that way. I guess that could be. It could be, be, right? Yeah, yeah, no. I guess it could be asking Because a Zercher squat um, is a it's very, a different exercise, well, and it's also very functional. Yeah, because yeah. You're, you oftentimes yeah, you would hold something heavy down. Yeah, here. you're holding something up in front of you. You're not something's not on your back. Even, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. No, th those are different exercises. I thought we were discussing the difference between the the front rack and then the the mm. crossed crossed arms, uh, but that makes. Um, yeah, no, I think you're talking about two different exercises. Then, then you, they're different. You can't, it's like, uh, comparing the, the front squat to a back squat. It's like they're, they're different movements. Totally. Mm -hmm. Even though squat is in the name. Yep. Look, if you like mind pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on uh, Instagram at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam.